through Jesus, God not only offered forgiveness of sins of the past or sins one at a time in a transactional kind of way, but he ended the burden of the cycle of sin, then ask for forgiveness, sin, then sacrifice for forgiveness, sin, then ask, sin, then sacrifice. Because really, in that kind of a system where sin requires you to do something, whether that's ask or confess or do a penance or a sacrifice of some sort, what happens in between a sin, like a lustful thought, and when you ask for forgiveness? I mean, what happens between the time you say your morning or evening prayers and the next time that you say them? Because guaranteed you've done something wrong in between that time, whether it's an hour or 24 hours or more. In that kind of a system, in order to be perpetually at peace with God, you'd have to live constantly locked in your room doing nothing but asking God to forgive you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. And I promise you, you'd probably get bored and you'd probably get frustrated and you'd sin in some way even in that amount of time doing it. So it's impossible. And that's not what God wants you to do anyway. That's not why he brought you onto this earth, is so that you lock yourself in a room consistently asking for forgiveness. No, he wants you to live in the joy of your salvation. Live in it. Jesus made it so that you don't have to worry about this stuff. And let me show you. Colossians 2, 11. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision. There's that word spiritual again. Here's what it means. The cutting away of your sinful nature. Hear this. When you placed your faith in Jesus, that thing in you that you were born with, which separated you from God and made you to sin whether you wanted to or not, your sin nature was cut out of you. It wasn't managed. It can't be managed. God's not asking you to manage it. It was cut out of you because it had to be. That's the only thing that works. And it seems to me that this was a little hard for Paul's audience to understand. I mean, it's still hard for us to understand some 2,000 years later with all the theology and books we've had written. It's still difficult to grasp, I guess because it seems too good to be true. But that is the gospel. So Paul spelled it out in one of my favorite passages of Scripture, Colossians 2, 13-14. 14, and this is often kind of a spiritual warfare passage, and that's because it is what shuts the devil up. Look at this. Paul says, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. He's talking about before salvation there. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us, and took it away. There's that phrase, took it away again, scapegoat. Took it away by nailing it to the cross. There's so much to this. But let me make this personal to you. When you placed your faith in Jesus, your sin nature was removed. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. It can't grow back. That means the wall of separation between God and you is gone. You are forever reconciled with him. As Paul said, it also means that all your sins were forgiven and the charges against you were removed, taken away, so that you are forever at peace with God. It means that, yeah, though you still sin at times, those sins don't stick to you requiring a fresh cleansing every time. It means that though you still sin at times, you are no longer defined as a sinner. This is why I'm so adamant about Christians not using that phrase, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Yes, you are saved by grace. Praise God. But upon that salvation, that thing in you that defined you as a sinner was cut out of you. I know that might seem to some like I'm just tripping up over a definition of words, 
But the heart of the gospel message is at stake in this because the gospel is not just about forgiveness of sin, but it's about an exchanged identity. It's not about you being a forgiven sinner. The gospel message is about you being permanently cleansed so that you are considered brand new and made right, complete in Christ. That's why it's a better covenant with better promises. It's like your car staying clean despite the rain. It's like your countertop staying clean despite the batter, the grease, or the dust. It's like despite wrong memories, you are a right person. Despite wrong symptoms, you are a right person. Despite wrong feelings, you are a right person. It's like Christ writes you despite you, which is a miracle, which is why it's spiritual and something you can't produce or do in the flesh. This is God's work. You are God's work. God had to do it, and he did it. 